right, welcome today. I'm here with my main man, Ali. And we're going to have another one of our talks. Now, the last time we talked, we talked about how it is the men's fault for the state of the women. I'm going to further elaborate on that. You see, if we're going to fix our people, then we have to pin the blame where the power and the responsibility lies. Right? So what happens is you have to ask yourself who have the authority to fix it. Right? And part of my voice, I know my voice is a little loud, and I hope this is coming across on camera, but we're going to have to talk anyway. So if we're going to fix it, who has the authority to fix the state of their nation? The men. The men have the authority to fix the state of the nation. So the men have the authority to fix the state of the nation. Period. That's point blank, exclamation point, end of the statement. No excuses. No excuses. Right? So any man that has an excuse as to why he blames someone else for the state of the nation being the way it is, that man has a lack of accountability. Big fancy word means he doesn't want to be held accountable for something that he feels <laughs> he's not responsible for. Exactly. But even though we know it to be a fact that every man of that nation is not only accountable to that nation and those people, but he's also accountable and responsible to his own actions and his family. And here's the issue. Family. If you're going to fix the nation, you have to fix the family. And fixing the family does not mean fixing the women. Why? Because the women have had an upper hand for, I don't know, what, the last 200 years, mm -hmm. right? Since the start of the feminist movement. So since they've given the upper hand of the family to the woman in my, in my people, now I'm not talking about other nations, I'm talking about my people, you know, the people who speak the same language I do from the same nation I came from, right? Since they gave the woman the upper hand, Nothing has been fixed. Nothing has gotten better. As a matter of fact, the women have gotten more frustrated, but they won't relinquish their power. Right. They're not giving that up, right? It's a female-dominated society in America. Mm -hmm. So you can't fix the family, and you don't have the power, the authority, or the equipment to do so. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? You have a bunch of irresponsible men creating families irresponsibly. And with, with the lack of accountability or integrity. Right. Now, this is the state in which we're in. Done. I'm not complaining about it. I'm, I'm not complaining about it. Want to know why? We in it. When I was born, I was born into it this way. I'm not complaining about it. <coughs> it's that Adam state. From the beginning. I'm not complaining about it. That's what it is. We like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do something different. <clears throat> it's my fault. Accountability. Yeah. All right. Now that I accept that it's my fault, I'm going to do the next step and I'm going to have some, I'm going to take responsibility. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something about it. How are you going to do something about it? First things first, I'm going to reestablish myself and my family in the land we're supposed to be in and establish that we're going to do what we're supposed to do. Exactly. Right? That's where I'm at with it. And now here's your issue. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, speak up, man. Make sure the mic can hear you. Many brothers who feel that they don't have to return back to their native land or homeland. They can, they're, they're fine. They can do it just right where they're at. You know what? I'm cool with that. <clears throat> I'm cool with that too. Mm -hmm. Stay there. Don't come. I don't want you here. Why? Because what you want to do is depend on another nation, right? You want another nation to give you the resources, the supplies, and the support you need for you to rebuild yourself while they cash in off you. Exactly. You know what that makes you? Retarded. 
I'm, I'm sorry. It makes you retarded. Right? Until you get amongst your own people and come out from underneath these other people's eye of scrutiny trying to keep you down, you can forget it. So again, I'm taking responsibility. I'm going to get up off my little tacky. That's what we say here in, 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 in Israel. I'm going to get off my tacky. Right? And I'm going to get on my job, and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to do it with nobody looking. Exactly. Right? That's integrity. Mm -hmm. Right? So the state of the black woman, I'm apologizing. It's my fault. And since it's my fault, I'm going to fix it. Now, when I fix it, I want you to understand I'm running things. I fixed it. You follow me. And that's the way it was supposed to be from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, the brothers who watch my videos who want to say that the woman is responsible for her actions. Yes, to a degree. <coughs> and how, can you, how can you actually hold her responsible for her actions when the charge was laid to you? Well, like I said, remember I said to a degree. So if I'm enforcing righteous and justice, right, the, the honest law of the most high, then at the end of the day, what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you the right thing to do. If you don't do the right and lawful thing, which I told you to do, and you go off and do something else, I know that your problem is going to come back to me. Right. And I'm going to have to correct you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So case in point, right? If my wife goes out and commits adultery, mm -hmm. right? And I catch them, well, you don't have to worry about it. We don't have to wait for it. I kill both of them right there, but we're playing the dude. Exactly. But then you have some men say, no, no, you can't do I that. I don't care. We're not, what? We're, we're, no, no. We're not, they, in that, we're not in that time. I, I'm, hold on. I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not in that land. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm out here, and people get to missing every day. Every day, Palestinians die, and don't, none of y'all care nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Every day. Uh, my people die in the streets of America and don't none of y'all care about it. So I don't want to hear about this. Exactly. I don't want to hear about it. This is how I govern my life. If the law states this one is death, I'm killing. Mm -hmm. That's how you stop wickedness. I don't have any problems with wickedness around me. Okay. Man, you've been here. You've been here going on nine months. Get ready to be a year. Right. Right. I, I, I don't have to raise my voice, fight or argue with nobody. Man. The law is established where I am. Literally. I have a literal, I have an altar of unearth and stone in front of my house. Mm -hmm. I do my sacrifices and my family joins in and we bless Allah. Built by our own hands. Built by our own hands. Ain't nobody coming in or nothing. Exactly. I do everything by the book. And the Most High does exactly what he said he would do by the book. Right? Like when the Most High said, when you return to the land, right, and you keep my law, he said every man will sit under the fruit of his vineyard. Oh, let me show you something. You, you see the vineyard? I'm sitting under it, right? Nah, hold on. You 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 want to keep telling you want to keep telling me it's not literal mm -hmm. until you get into the situation. Mm -hmm. Then when you get in the situation, you be like, oh. No, he really meant like it, it's this. It don't mean something else. Now, ain't no meaning. I don't, I don't have a meaning. I'm just talking straight. Mm -hmm. And in keeping straight talk, I could say, listen, I didn't say that I want to kill you or I feel like killing you. I'm saying if the law warrants your death for an unlawful action, hey, we got to do what we got to do as exactly. men. Stand up and put the wickedness out. But then you have you have a lot of you have a lot of men. In captivity, and this is not me. This this plain, okay. You have a lot of men in act, act in captivity trying to execute righteous <laughs> laws now, or what they consider to be righteous laws. That is a problem, mm -hmm. and this brings up the statement you made from the beginning. Right. When you return to the land, then you keep the law. You can't keep it in another land. Exactly. Exactly. It don't belong to you. Right? The Most High says my eye is perpetually on Zion. Right? It's forever before my face. So come and you do what I commanded you to do as my people 
in the land I gave you right here. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't care who's teaching, right? Every teacher all around the world, all of them, all of them, all of them, they all, they all wrong. When you look at the literalness of what's supposed to be established by the law, you won't find nobody doing it. And the reason why nobody's doing it is because the person who was appointed to, the people, the nation he's appointed to, is not doing it. So that's why nobody's doing it. And you keep looking to the nations to research their history books to find and find out who you are and what you're supposed to be doing when the law is in front of your face. And the only thing you had to do was come back to the house of Abraham where the Most High said come and ask for the Abraham and customs and stop at the customs and then refine the customs to perfection by following through with the instructions of the law. So the customs was like step one. So you have to be in the land and living the cultural way. Step two was the refinement of the addition of the law to bring it into perfection. Now, you didn't want to do that because you didn't want to be accountable. Remember, it wasn't your fault from the beginning. So you're going to sit there with, with, with what I like to call chosen one syndrome. Exactly. There's one chosen dude that's going to come and fix all these problems, and that ain't me. <laughs> you got chosen men syndrome, which makes you retarded. Right? Instead of you being accountable for your family, for your life, and for your future generations, you passing the buck to the next one. This is the beautiful thing about being here in the land. Okay? Living in the land and living under uh, righteous rule or, or living under the laws of Yahweh. <laughs> okay? That's the beauty of it. Of living righteously. I have no excuse. I have no reason for me not to keep or try to keep the laws of Yah Allah. I have no reason to. In captivity, you have a lot of brothers say, "Well, the times have changed." Uh, this, you know, this you know, this savior. Or, listen, uh -huh. ain't nothing changed. Mm -hmm. Let's let's get. I'm gonna tell you the facts. Right here's a fact: the laws established is forever. It was perfect when it was given. It's perfect now. Done. Exactly. The one written by the hand of the Most High, the Most High says, I changed that. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Somebody's letters attached to a book does not exactly. qualify as scripture. Exactly. I'm sorry. Exactly. If I wrote a letter and somebody took the pages of my letter and, and I write in ancient Hebrew and somebody put that and said, oh, this is a scripture. No, it's not a scripture. That's just my letter to so-and-so. It's not doctrine. It's not law. That's period, point blank. So I'm sorry. You have to take stuff at face value, fact value. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have to look at what it is. The Most High said, go to the law. Every prophet said, keep the rules. Go to the law. It's the law of Allah. Keep it. But you don't want to do that. And I'm saying the law. And I, because, and, you know, I know y'all want to hear God or Lord or whatever. I'm saying it to piss you off. What? Because the whole family of Shem says the law. All of us. That means from Shem down to Abraham, all the way down, we all say a law. Why? Because the promise and the covenant the Most High made to Noah, the covenant he made with Shem, the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, with Jacob, the covenant he made with Ishmael. Oh, y'all don't know Ishmael got a covenant. I know. Y'all don't read. Y'all don't know none of the covenants. Y'all don't know none of the promises and the blessings that the Most High put on someone because you don't have none of the books. Exactly. Exactly. And you know why you don't have them? Because they're not out there in the world. They're here. They're here. You're still using the same books that, that your enemy gave you. Right. And now when you come back to the land, you have to get new books and it's a new understanding. Exactly. And that understanding is confirmed by the land, by the people. And then you further confirm it by your actions because you'll reap the results or the benefits of your actions in exactly. the land. Exactly. So if you think you can keep the law as an Israelite in Timbuktu, I, I, go try it. I don't, I don't have a problem. Go try it. Go. I, listen, if you think Israel is in South America, go. You think America... If you think America is Israel, stay there. No, for real, for real. If you think it's in Africa, go. As a matter of fact, go search all the four corners of the world and make sure that 
Zion is not there. Because every time somebody comes in from one of them places, they be they they ready to listen in and do what the most high said do. You see, because this this chosen one syndrome y'all got, it prevents y'all from actually following the instruction. You keep waiting for somebody else. And then it proliferates in your life. That's how you get this crabs in the barrel syndrome exactly. to where you can't see your brother do good. Mm-hmm. What? Because if this guy's at the top and he's at the top of his game, then you makes that guy at the top has to become cutthroat to make sure y'all can't come up unless y'all come through him. Mm-hmm. Right? And now your enemies support this because they get you to tearing each other down. Exactly. Meanwhile, when they when they create a, something, they create a platform. Everybody right. come on this and we're going to build up. That's and then we're going to build a new platform. And we're going to build up. Meanwhile, you building on the pyramid and wonder why it stopped at the same point. You know, it's amazing. Nobody has ever paid attention that no black man in America has ever died and passed on generational wealth. I don't care what he built, what he designed, what he made. He never passed on generational wealth. Never. So they tear him down the moment he gets close to it. The, they feel like he's at the end of what his contribution could possibly be. Or the moment he stops the debauchery. Right. Stops the debauchery. Y'all think money rules the world. No, money don't. As a matter of fact, the U.S. dollar is damn near worthless now exactly. internationally. They're doing everything they can to get rid of the dollar. And once they finish, they're going to be finished with America 100%. So now you're getting rid of the dollar. So the money don't really rule the world. And y'all going to figure this out the hard way. At the top of the world, is nothing but debauchery. So on your quest to get money, you always find they ask you to compromise some lawful action and commit debauchery to get the money. I'll stay broke. I don't care. I'd rather be poor and righteous than be unrighteous and rich. What? Let it be the will of the Most High to give me wealth and to bless me how he says wealth should be given. Right? If, If he says that wealth is in having flocks and flocks of sheep and land and vineyards, I want that. You can keep all the paper money you want. That's an illusion. Exactly. I'd rather have the silver, the gold, and the resources. I'd rather have an unlimited food supply the way I can watch my food grow. I don't got to go to the store. It's a different mindset. You see? You see, you know the ironic thing? That lifestyle that you mentioned, it's affordable here. Yeah, you can do it here. You can do it here. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Israelites can do it here. Exactly. Exactly. Now, when you get here, I'm going to tell you flat out, the Israelites look like us. Mm-hmm. So we know who Israel is right. because Isaac and Ishmael looked exactly the same. Same daddy. Mm-hmm. You see? We look the same. And Israelites always mix in the mingling with Egyptians. So we know exactly who they are too. So this is covered under what we doing. We know who's who, what's what, and what everybody looks like. It's not a question about who's what anymore for us. That got sorted out and we, again, came back. So a lot of stuff gets sorted out in actually taking the first step and following the instructions. Right? Even though you're not even sure what the next step or the next set of instruction is, but taking the first one will lead you to the second one. One step at a time, right? Why are you worried about what's happening in prophecy on step 10 and you haven't taken step one? What's first and step one then? Yo, listen. What would be considered step one? Listen, I'm going to tell you. Mm-hmm. Step one. Step one always has and always will be read the law in its entirety and accept it. Mm-hmm. And then when you get here, Please understand, you're going to read the law again, and it's going to read a little different. Exactly. You're going to have to accept the new one over the old one. Not what you come here with, that don't work. When you get here, you're going to be given another one. You have to accept it and walk it out. 
You have to test it. That's how you test it. You literally have to try it and walk it out and endure. Which means you got to get tired. You got to go far for endurance. Right? It's not quick. Like you do something and it's like rubbing a genie lamp and bling. And all of a sudden your problems are done. Right, just in case, because I know a lot of you, when he says new law, I know, I know a lot of them are thinking right now, new law, but he, he has his own law. Well, I'll and tell you. Something changed within the law? Well, I mean, I'm going to tell you. The difference is between reading a comic book and the encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. So when you get here, the law you're going to see here is going to spell out all of the instructions and the variables in stark detail. Mm -hmm. So you, you think that you know how to do an offering? You have no clue until you get here. And then you read the law and you see the details. But you're going to have to do it and read it and read it and do it and then you'll see the connection. You can't just read it and say you understand it because you've read it. Because reading it and doing it is two different things. When you read it and you do it, then you go back and reread it. You'll see the connection and you have a clear understanding from that point. And now when you say doing it, okay, now doing it also takes you with. Like what part? Like when you do, you just read it. And, and, and then you just automatically start doing it. I mean, what, what, what leads you to, to, to really getting or gaining the understanding of that's, doing the actual sacrifice? That's the, the whole part of that is comes in the process, right? If you don't get here, you're not going to be able to do it the way the Torah says to do it. Mm -hmm. You're just not. You can try. You can have some experience on some points and some things, but you don't get the full understanding because the tradition is not outside. Exactly. exactly. So you have to come in. And then accept the first half, which is who you are, who you come from, and what your family culture is. Once you know what your family culture is, then the doing and the refining through the law begins to take place. Because Israel's retarded, man. <laughs> I'm going to just say it. Like, you think you're going to come here with the books that you have out there in the world, and you're going to teach the world something here from their own books. Exactly, and they've been living it. You're just living their lives. That's just retarded to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it don't make no sense. And this, to bring us all the way back around full circle, you see what I'm saying? This is what we're talking about, is taking accountability, responsibility, and integrity. Integrity means, before I can even talk to you about doing something, I gotta be doing it. Right? This discipleship actually translates to mentorship. Right? Come, I'm going to show you what I do for success in this field. And I'm doing it, and I'm going to continue to do it, and you're going to now come and do it with me. And this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. exactly. Right? Nobody could teach you how to keep these laws outside the land. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when you read the law, the first thing the law states is, when I bring you into the land, then you will keep these laws before me. When, then. I, that's just what it is. You know? And now going back to the repairs. If you're going to repair, <coughs> the, the repairing of the nation begins with just one family. Right? If you can repair the relationship between the man and his establishment, his established responsibility in the family, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can fix the community. And when you fix the community, the community will then fix the nation because you can replicate success, right? I have a wife, right? And I have other prospective wives, right? They're prospective, meaning I'm interested, but I have to look to see if they're going to do the right thing. Exactly. Right? What do you mean? The first thing I do when I meet a woman is I ask the woman, I ask her, do you want to get married? Right? Mm -hmm. I want to marry you. Do you want to get married? Do you want to, do you want to marry me? All right? Now, she may say, well, I don't know. I don't know you. Which is a typical response for this day and age and time. Mm -hmm. Getting to know me is not the issue. Right? If you're not interested in marrying me, and the answer, that, the answer should just be no, I don't want to marry you. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know you, and I don't want to marry you. I'll never want to marry you. Just by looking at you, I don't want to marry you. 
That's a fine answer. I can accept that. But if we're going to be laughing and flirting and giggling and we know we're interested, you need to know up front what my intentions are. So if I say, listen, I want to ask for your hand in marriage right now up front so that everything we do from this day forward is an investment towards my family and our legacy. Exactly. Before I take you to the movies, if I'm taking you to the movies, I want to be taking my future wife to the movies. I don't want to be taking somebody I don't know. You mean no dinner? No dinner? No dinner, man. No movies? No movies. No holding hands? Nah, none of that. Okay, I got you. None of that. Okay. And that's how I roll. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there's, there's females who said no. It keeps things respectable. Listen, I'd rather ask and hear no than say off the top, you know, uh, you know, I, I dated her for six months. And you know, within the six months span, you don't work your way up to having mm -hmm. sex in the whole nine yards. Maybe she pregnant, maybe she not. And then she up and decides she don't want to be with you. Mm -hmm. If I ask for marriage first, then I know every step I'm making is going towards marriage. Right. And if she doesn't feel like I don't want to marry him, all right, fine. Because I'm not really dating you anyway. I'm really coming to meet the family. I want to see how your aunties are, your uncles are. I want to see what I'm marrying. I want to see the three generations. Exactly. I want to see you. I want to see your mother, your aunties and uncles. I want to see grandma, <laughs> grandpa, and whatever children you got. You because, that, yeah. because I want to know what stock you coming from. <laughs> I want to know where your family's at. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not judging you by your family mm -hmm. because your family can be into almost anything and now you are into something new, right? But I at least want to know what I'm dealing with because mm -hmm. you're going to have some of those same quirks. You're going to have some of them same attitudes and you're going to have some of them same thought processes because the apples don't make pears. Exactly. You're just a good apple, <laughs> right? Hey, right. You, you might have a tree... And there's a, some bad apples, some worms got in it. But there's a one good apple. All right, I'll take the good apple and throw the bad ones away. Right, right. How do I know? Because you're going to want to go through the process with the commitment up front. If you're not going to take the commitment up front, why am I wasting my time, breath, and money, right, on you when that's something that's an investment for my future wife? It's not for, for somebody who don't want to be interested in exactly. me. I'm only interested in somebody who's going to be my wife. I'm not. A, I don't want to be interested in somebody who want to waste my time for six months, a year, two years, and then we. I'm done with that. I don't do that no more. Right. Right. And so now, like, I have a wife, and I have others that I'm interested in. Ain't no sex. It's just conversation. Heck, they not even in the country. And I'm saying they, right? But you don't know if they is one or two or three or none. But I'm saying they because I can have more than one wife. But if you want to get to know more of those kind of details, ladies, then get to know me. But understand, if you're going to want to get to know me, you don't need to know me. You ain't going to be my wife. You don't need to. I just say how I keep it moving. I, I press on. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. My wife, she don't pay no bills. My wife, she 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 good. She don't worry about nothing. She don't need nothing. She ain't stressed. Food stay on the table. The water, electric stay on. She don't pay no rent. She don't have to work. She work because she want to. Exactly. You and that goes. Tell me she work because she wants to. When she does go out to work. She, you don't take her money? No, I don't take her money. Mm. Y'all talk about a Proverbs mm. 31. Y'all talk about a Proverbs 31 woman, right? And it says to give her the fruit of her hand. So if she worked for it, that's hers. My responsibility over her has nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with her. Exactly. I'm trying to take care of herself. She don't have no business handling none of that. But... A wise Not, woman. A wise woman. A wise woman will would. re will reinvest into her home and build her home. Exactly. That's a wise woman, but that's her choice to do with her money. Mm -hmm. right? right? If you see like she want a new couch and she got the money, she can go out and purchase it. Right. <coughs> she 
she can go and purchase it. And that purchase needs to be ad- admired. I admire that. That you took the time out. You really took the time out with your workings and your earnings and you didn't buy, like, hair products? Mm-hmm. You bought something for the house? Wow, that's amazing. That is fantastic. I appreciate that. So, again, I'm looking for those kind of qualities in a woman. And, again, that's a wife. Did you know also when they said within the book, I don't know if you want to bring this point out, but within the book that they had, Proverbs, mm-hmm. it speaks about, uh, uh, well, in, 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 in the tall rooms, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't say virtuous. Yeah, it says industrious woman. Mm-hmm. But like I said, you know, that's a little nugget, mm-hmm. right? The difference between it, the 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 difference between our book and and, and, and their books mm-hmm. is the governance is direct. Who has the authority, and who can do what, and who's doing what, and what's the delegation, right? right? You know, a woman can't tell a man um, she can't rule over him in any way, exactly. right? It's, she's supposed to listen to her husband's guidance. And the husband is accountable for her actions, whether it's righteous or sin, mm-hmm. which is why he can command her under righteous or sin. If your husband tells you to lie, you lie. I don't care. He's right. You lie. Because whatever punishment, whatever's coming, is coming to him. Mm-hmm. The most high holds the man accountable. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, if she does something out of her own, which he didn't tell her to do, then it's her fault. Back to our first subject, right? Remember? So for you angry brothers out there, you upset with me talking about false this and false that. You know, I I want you to understand. If you didn't tell her what to do, right or wrong, it's your fault. Right? If you told her what to do and she didn't do it, then she's 100%. She's alone in her actions. And you've cleared your name. Exactly. That's righteous. Right? Right? You want to be mad at who your daughter bring home and you didn't pick the dude? You had 14 years. You knew you had a little girl when she came out the womb. You had 14 years to pick for her. Right? Why you didn't pick for her? You should pick. The, you should have picked for her and say, okay, you want to get married at this age, but this is your husband, y'all betrothed. Right? Pick for your daughter. Pick, exactly. pick for her. You scared? Oh, you want it to be her choice. Well, you let it be her choice and she picked Boo Boo the Fool, you know what I'm saying, and, and Raggedy McMuffin. Mm-hmm. That's what she do. Exactly. Why? Because she, she inexperienced. She'll know nothing about men. She'll know nothing about nothing. And you threw her out there to the street. Exactly. So now her actions is caused by you. You caused that. You the man. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, any woman listening to me, she understands what a man sound like. She's going to say, yo, that brother's talking truth and he's strong. He's solid. Right? right? If, if, if it's my fault for not taking proper actions, then that's on me. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I know I'm talking from a different cultural perspective and a different lifestyle here outside of the country of America. And that's my point. I live a different way Right? Here. And you can't live it there. So, we're going to end the conversation here. And I know we probably didn't touch on a lot of things or go into depth, but this is how we talk. Right? This is the conversation. You know what I'm saying? And we're talking about if you're going to be a man, you need to breathe air. Accountability, integrity, and responsibility. And the most important is integrity because integrity is what you do when nobody looking. You could talk a good one, but if you get behind closed doors and you slide north, you don't have no integrity. Exactly. Exactly. A spade is a spade all day. Right? Black is black. In the dark and in the light. Be what you are. You know what I'm saying? That's just it. Let he who is righteous be righteous still, and let he who is unrighteous be unrighteous still. You're going to be who you are. I could delineate now the difference between the two. And it ain't based upon dress code and whether you show up for services or class or whatever it is y'all do now. 
I don't know. You know, y'all got so much going on here. I don't care where you where you go and, and dip yourself in some water. Don't none of that count for righteousness. Exactly. What counts for righteousness is the person who lives and keeps the law. The person who doesn't do usury to his brother. And you know that mm-hmm. usury thing. Yeah. yeah. Always trying to make a profit. Make a profit. Right. Off your money. And I understand mm-hmm. the idea, the concept, you're trying to say I'm conducting business, but you're conducting business the way your enemies conduct business with you, and you're not conducting business lawfully. You can't do it outside like mm-hmm. that. You have to come back to the land so you exactly. can receive the brotherly discount. Oh, you know, I'm talking too much. The brothers getting a discount. They want to think about how they can go and y'all sell it and make a profit. You know why? Because y'all full of it. Let me